Hi! In this guide, we're going to use a table to display some data that we have in our backend. I have in a previous video imported some data into my backend. So if we have a quick look here at the backend dashboard, we can see I have this class called parks that contains data around some uh, parks, uh, national parks in the US. So that's what we want to display in our front end. So let's close this and go back to our components here and look, let's click into the start page. So here on the start page, uh, I want to just give everything some padding. So I'm gonna give the page 80 pixels padding all around like so. And then this text node here, that's gonna become my header uh, for, for the table, uh, for the overall table. So let's reset some of these alignments like so. And then I don't want it display. I think a title medium will be good. And let's call it Parks in America like that. Great. Next, I'm going to add a group because I want to have both this text as well as the table in the same group. And this group can be the uh, explicit width and content height and the width at 100%. We can also go ahead and enable scroll here um, because if we have a table that has a lot of content horizontally, we want to be able to scroll in it and We'll see that here in a second. So next I want to add in my table and the table, it is a prefab. So we go, I bring up the node picker and go over to the prefab section here, find the table and click the clone button. And now you can see we have a table component here and we can either drag it in from here like so, or we can use the node picker, of course. If we search for table, we'll find the table, and then we can just add it as a child to this group. And here we have a nice looking table. Now, we want to, of course, not display this default data. We want to display the data from the back end. And in order to do that, we need to feed this component with that data. And we get the data by using a query records node. So I'm adding one of those, and then we need to tell it which class it should be querying. And in this case, it's the parks class. So let's select that. And now if I connect from the query records to the table like this, items to items, we can see that we have a bunch of data from the back end. Now you can see we, we still can't scroll horizontally. And to do that, let's add another group here. We'll put, put it there. We'll put the table inside of that group. And then this group will say, you're gonna be as tall as your, um, as tall as you can be, but the width of your content. And now we can see if we enable scroll on this as well. We also want it to lay out horizontally. Now we can scroll and we can see we have a couple of more fields here from, from the back end. Great. So oftentimes you might not want to have the exact headers as the column names in the back end. And you also might want to be able to move some of these. So in my case, I would like to show the image first and then maybe have the name and state and so on. And also, I don't think I need to display the created at and updated at. And to control that, we can go into the table here. If we select the table and then we can select the headers section here. So I click edit on that. And in here, we will add headers as objects in an array. So I'll create an array like so. And then our first object will take a property called field. And this is where you uh, define 
uh, which field this header should be for in, in the back end. So in my case here, since I want to have the image source first, we'll say image src. And then we can say that we don't want it to have this image uh, underscore src as the label. It feels a little unfriendly. So let's just call it image. And since this is actually stored as text in the backend, if we don't give it a type, it will automatically map to a text or string cell. Um, but I want this to be displayed as an image and there is a image type of cell. So let's give it a type here and that's an image. And then let's add the other headers. So let's first add one here. We want the uh, name next. And let's give it a label as well. If maybe we want to change it later, we we'll call that name as well. And then let's copy this and I'll probably speed this up to for the video to make it a little bit faster. Okay, so those are all the headers I want to display. So now when I click outside here, boom, we can see that the table updated, it has the uh, headers that I described and it's showing the image here. That's awesome. So one last thing is if I reload this application now, you might notice that we see some initial data here. I'll do it again. Sometimes it goes very quick and that sort of initial stuff that we see, that is because the table comes with some items as a default so that you can see that the table is there. And so those are defined here in the items property of the data section of the table. And to get rid of that uh, sort of initial when you reload um, stuff, we can just make sure that this array is empty. So I'm just gonna remove all these objects and then click outside. And now you can see this is empty here, but if I hit reload, we can see all the data again. If I hit reload again, we don't see any rows with crazy data in them. So yeah, that's how you use the table with query records. In the next guide, we'll add some pagination to this table and make sure that we can um, make it so that the user can decide how many rows they want to display at a time. Thanks for watching and happy noodling.